One of the most mysterious locations in the Harry Potter series is the Department of Mysteries. Hell, the title even has the word mystery in it. It houses some of the most intriguing objects that the series has to offer. In this video, I'm going to explain everything you need to know about the Department of Mysteries, from its different divisions to its history. The Department of Mysteries is one of the oldest wizarding locations in Britain, actually predating the Ministry of Magic. The first known records were created in 1672, so we can assume that it formed around this time. It's located in the second lowest level of the Ministry of Magic, on level 9. Considering the fact that it was created before the Ministry, we can assume that they built the Ministry around the Department of Mysteries, and they took it over and made it one of their departments. When you first walk in, you're in a large black and circular room. It has a dozen identical, handleless doors set at every interval. Behind many of the doors is the location of a certain division that the department works on. The doors on the wall rotate every so often to confuse people and to stop them from knowing which door is which. If you ask the room where the exit is, however, the door to the exit will swing open to let you out. The employees that work in this department are known as unspeakables, and they are forbidden to disclose any details about their job, the department they work in, or the work that they do. There are certain divisions that the department and the unspeakables focus on. These are prophecies, love, death, space, brains, and time. The Prophecies Division has a whole section called the Hall of Prophecies. The room is as high as a church and is full of nothing but towering shelves covered in small dusty glass orbs. Each one of these orbs contains a prophecy, and they have almost every prophecy ever told by a seer. Many of these orbs, however, are copies of the original prophecies, as we saw in Order of the Phoenix when Dumbledore had the real prophecy in his office after the copy in the Department of Mysteries was smashed. Each orb can only be picked up by the Keeper of the Hall or the person who the prophecy is about. If anyone else tried to pick it up, harmful defensive spells would be shot at them. Another division is their study of brains. It's located behind one of the dozen doors, and it's in a room that houses a large tank. Inside the tank, there is green liquid with brains floating in it. The brains are aggressive and have tentacles that could wrap itself around anything that it comes into contact with. The tentacles were so strong that they were compared to strong thick ropes, and the brain itself was compared to a powerful octopus. After the series ended, Rowling said that the Minister for Magic, Adeline Gamble, who served from 1827 to 1830, established committees to investigate muggle brain power. These committees might have launched the Brain Study Division in the Department of Mysteries. Another division that the unspeakable study is death. The death chamber houses a stone archway that looks so ancient, cracked, and crumbling that Harry was amazed it was still standing. It had a tattered black curtain or a veil in the middle of it. The veil had somewhat of an alluring presence. Harry found himself drawn to it and couldn't stop walking in its direction. He even resisted very hard when Hermione pulled him back. Even Ginny and Neville found themselves in a trance, and they too had to be pulled out of it by Ron and Hermione. Some people can also hear voices or whispering through the veil. The voices. Can you tell what they're saying? There aren't any voices, Harry. Let's get out of here. I hear them too. These voices are whispers from the dead that live beyond the veil. Sirius Black fell through this veil while dueling Bellatrix. His body curved in a graceful arc as he sank backward through the ragged veil hanging from the arch. He passed through the portal that led to the afterlife, never to return in human form again. Love is another division that the unspeakable study. This division was located behind one of the dozen doors, and it housed something extremely hot. The door is always locked, and when Harry tried to open it with this special knife that could unlock anything, he pulled it out and realized that his knife had been melted. Dumbledore told Harry a bit about this, saying, There is a room in the Department of Mysteries that contains a force that is at once more wonderful and more terrible than death, than human intelligence, than forces of nature. It is also perhaps the most mysterious of the many subjects for study that reside there. He was of course speaking of love, the only thing known to have ever beaten the killing curse from a defenseless person. Only one person is known to have survived it, and he's sitting in this room. The room is also rumored to have an entire fountain filled with Amortentia, the most powerful love potion in the wizarding world. 
Another division that they study is space. The room for this is filled with planets floating in midair. People that enter have the illusion that they're in space. Luna said that while they were there, they were floating, meaning the room has very little gravity, making it even more realistic. This is most likely where the unspeakables study space and learn about our solar system, and possibly other solar systems as well. And now, the most developed division, time. This is where time is studied, and is said to be where time turners originated. It houses clocks from every surface, both large and small. The place also has a busy and relentless ticking that fills the ears of anyone that enters. At the end of the room, there is a towering crystal bell jar. Inside of it is an egg. If you watch it, you see it crack open and see a hummingbird emerge. It's then carried to the top of the jar, but then it's taken back down to the bottom, and it re-encloses itself into the egg. It then continues the cycle on a loop. During the battle of the Department of Mysteries, we also saw that other objects in the room do this as well, when a grandfather clock smashed on the ground, and seconds later went back up and got put back together. Time is one of the things that the unspeakable studied more than anything, and they found out it was one of the most dangerous things to tamper with. Mysterious thing, time. Powerful. And when meddled with, dangerous. They conducted many experiments and realized that people who went back too far always ended up dying. They eventually figured out why in 1899, when an unspeakable named Alois Mintumble became trapped in the year 1402 for five days. While returning to the present, her body aged the amount of time she was traveling, so when she came back to the present, her body had aged five centuries. She died at St. Mungo's Hospital shortly after. On top of that, they realized that the people that she came into contact with while she was in 1402 caused great disturbances to those people's family and ancestors. She affected it so dramatically that no fewer than 25 of their descendants vanished in the present, having never been born. After seeing what had happened to their fellow unspeakable and the damage that she caused, they made sure that experimenting with time was restricted from then on. They realized that the longest period of time in which you can go back without serious harm to the traveler or time itself is around 5 hours. That being said, they still have hundreds of laws because even going back those few hours could still have dramatic consequences. The unspeakables were later able to encase single hour reversal charms in small enchanted hourglasses that a witch or wizard could wear around their neck. All they had to do was revolve it as many hours as they wanted to go back. Three times should do it, I think. The long-standing department has gone through a lot of controversy, and there were some disapprovers. The first person to oppose it was Rodolphus Lestrange, the Minister for Magic from 1835 to 1841. Not to be confused with his great-great-grandson, who was one of the Death Eaters that tortured Neville's parents into madness. This Rodolphus Lestrange that was Minister for Magic tried to close down the Department of Mysteries, but was ignored by the Unspeakables and the other members of the Ministry. When Voldemort took control during the First Wizarding War, he implanted planted a spy at the Department of Mysteries named Augustus Rookwood. He became an unspeakable and broke the biggest and most important department rule. He divulged their secrets when he reported to Voldemort. When Voldemort fell after trying to kill Harry Potter, Karkaroff ratted Rookwood out. He went to Azkaban for exposing the department's confidential experiments and secrets. When Voldemort made his return, he wanted nothing but to get his hands on the prophecy about him and Harry, which he knew was in the Department of Mysteries. The Order of the Phoenix was prepared for this and took shifts to protect the prophecy. Voldemort, knowing that he couldn't reveal himself, attempted to have others get it for him. Sturgis Podmore, a member of the Order, was put under the Imperious Curse by Lucius Malfoy to retrieve the prophecy. He was stopped and arrested. He was then sentenced to six months in Azkaban after refusing to speak in his defense to protect the order and the prophecy. After that failed, Avery, one of Voldemort's Death Eaters, told the Dark Lord that an unspeakable could retrieve the prophecy, even if it isn't about him. Lucius this time placed Broderick Bode, an unspeakable, under the Imperious Curse. He resisted the curse surprisingly well, perhaps because, being an unspeakable, he knew what would happen when he carried out the task of taking the prophecy, and he suffered very bad mind damage. He was taken to St. Mungo's Hospital, specifically in the Spell Damage Ward. He was in a state of comatose most of the time, and when he was awake, he was mumbling and staring at the ceiling. Bode eventually began to get better, and Voldemort, knowing that he couldn't risk Bode revealing what had really happened, told his Death Eaters to take care of it. They sent him a Christmas present, a potted plant that Bode kept on his bedside table. As he got better, the staff recommended that he take care of the plant. They of course did not realize that it was Devil's Snare in disguise. While he was taking care of it, it got bigger and stronger, and one night, the plant attacked him in his sleep. He was discovered dead the next morning. The death was ruled as a tragic accident. 
One night, Voldemort sent his snake Nagini to the Department of Mysteries. And while there, the snake attacked Arthur Weasley, who was on the Order of the Phoenix duty, to protect the prophecy. Nagini did exactly as she was told. She found out where that specific prophecy was located. Voldemort used the information that he had gotten from Nagini, and he started sending flashes to Harry to lure him to the prophecy. Harry, however, did not know about the prophecy, so he did not go. Voldemort put his final plan into play, which was to lure Harry by showing Sirius being tortured in the Department of Mysteries. Serious. This led to the Battle of the Department of Mysteries, when Harry, Ron, Hermione, Ginny, Neville, and Luna all went to save him, only to find out that it was a trap. When they were surrounded by Death Eaters, the six knocked over shelves and ran. This destroyed a huge number of the prophecies that were housed in the department. The six ended up fighting the Death Eaters. Ginny broke her ankle, and later on, she, Hermione, and Luna were all knocked out. Ron was hit by a spell that made him very loopy, pale, and have dark liquid and blood coming from the corner of his mouth. While he was loopy, he magically called one of the brains in the tank to him. When he caught it, its tentacles wrapped itself around him and took him to the ground, squeezing the life out of him. It took him a while, but he eventually overpowered the brain, but he was still too loopy to help in the fight. Neville's nose broke, but he continued to try and help Harry. He was later hit by a spell that made him do a wild tap dance uncontrollably. When Harry and Neville were trying to escape, he couldn't support his own weight while he was dancing like that. This led to them dropping and smashing the prophecy. Many of the Death Eaters took some hard hits as well. They stupefied many of them and hit them with many other curses. When Hermione stupefied one, his head landed in the bell jar that housed the hatching and rehatching egg. His head then transformed back and forth on a loop from a baby's head to an adult head. In the chaos of the fight, all of the time turners that were in the time room were smashed and destroyed. Rowling said that she did this to make sure she closed any plot holes the series might have or get in the future. When it was just Harry and Neville left, Bellatrix was torturing Neville, and Harry was surrounded, with wands pointing at him in all directions. When all seemed lost, the Order of the Phoenix arrived, saving the day. There was then a huge battle, the Death Eaters versus the Order. The part of the battle that took place inside the Department of Mysteries ended when Dumbledore arrived and Sirius Black died. It was then taken outside the department to the atrium of the Ministry where Dumbledore dueled Voldemort and both Voldemort and Bellatrix escaped. When Voldemort overthrew the Ministry by putting the Imperius Curse on Thick Nest, the new puppet Minister for Magic, they began intimidating and watching the Unspeakables very closely and possibly even threatening them. This scared the Unspeakables into allowing the Ministry to release a statement saying, Recent research undertaken by the Department of Mysteries reveals that magic can only be passed from person to person when wizards reproduce. Where no proven wizarding ancestry exists, therefore the so-called Muggleborn is likely to have obtained magical power by theft or force. This led to the Ministry releasing the Muggleborn Registration Commission, which convicted Muggleborns of having stolen magic from real wizards and witches. When convicted, they were sent to Azkaban. The Unspeakables admitted that none of this was true after Voldemort fell during the Battle of Hogwarts. They went on to do the regular duties and continue to explore mysteries. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button to help grow the channel. You can follow me on social media. Links are in the description. And keep an eye out for more great videos on the way.